is taking on the Croatian Mario Encic. This match has only just got underway. Joining me for this one, I'm glad to welcome back Jason Goodall, who's had a little bite to eat. A light refreshment. Done some carb loading in the players' restaurant. I'm all set for the next two matches. Nice time to join the match early on in the opening set. No breaks of serve as yet, and uh, this is a big match for both. Ancic played well in his return to the ATP Tour. Straight set win in the opening round, and poor Henri Mathieu played exceptionally well in defeating the Argentine Guillermo Canias a couple of days ago. It wasn't just the result. Canias is tough to beat anyway. But it was the manner of the victory. It was a set and fall up down before winning in three sets. It's breezy today. Tough conditions for the players after the relative calm of the opening two days. Too short, too much up the middle from Mathieu. He's going to get punished every time. so much. This is the second time these two have met. Ancic was the winner in straight sets when they played in Indian Wells last season. Six and three. Callum Tont, 40, 30. Today, he's trying to hold serve as much as you possibly can because it's not easy. And there have been no breaks as yet. 2 1. Seems to have a pretty good working relationship with his coach, Thierry Champion. Good player in his own right. He's worked with a lot of top players. Fies, amongst others. And 
the French seem to like to work with their own. It's a close knit camp. They do tend to support one another. And already this year, Mathieu has triumphed in Casablanca and Gestad. So looking for his third title of the year. Of course, it would be his first Master Series Shield. Best he's ever done at this level is reaching the semi finals here a couple of years ago. Played really well all week, too. Defeated Andy Roddick in the first round before losing to Rafael Nadal in the last four. See all hands. Lovely team. Of course, it's a little different on this court. You can only appeal to the linesmen and women and the umpire, and very rarely will you get any change from the umpire at this late stage. A little easier on center court, all I have to do is point towards the heavens and the electronic review system will do the rest. I don't know if you buy the argument that the umpires always give was the far sideline, I'm not going to touch it. Why is that blatantly obvious? If you're a half decent umpire, you have to step in, take a bit of responsibility. Yeah, I wonder whether it's difficult for the umpires to change that mentality from umpiring on centre court when they do have the official review system and they don't really do much other than keep the score, really, to coming outside of the centre court and really having to take a lot more responsibility. I think we'll have to get Jerry Armstrong, the last go off into the commentary booth for that one. game was better, his ranking would be a lot higher too. No question, he'd be in the top five in the world because from the back there's very few who hit the ball as hard as he does and he moves exceptionally well as well. But the difference between his baseline game and his net game, well, I'm not too sure if there's many players out there who have a greater disparity. His net game is actually very, very poor. Because he serves pretty well too, so he does have weapons, but does tend to struggle in the forecourt. That limits the tactics available to him. Count Kent, 14 15. behind the baseline good meter and a half behind the baseline you need some serious racket head speed to get the ball through the court it's a very dangerous player nobody likes coming up against him they know they can beat him if he's not playing particularly well but if he's on it's going to be tough
Avantage and Sitch. this cleanly given that he spent much of this year sidelined with Mono. Timing of the illness was horrible. Went seven in the world this time last year. Now way down at 38. <laughs> Good. Really did make a significant move up the rankings last year. Two these guys, Robbie, that can play well on a lot of different surfaces. Even though he's got a he's tall, he's got a good serve, he's got a great net game. You tend to think of him as being successful on the quicker courts, but he was having a lot of good success on the clay last year too. Question about that, Freddie Rosengren. Good relationship, fantastic working relationship. Freddie's worked with a bunch of players. Notably, the Swedes, Swede himself, Magnus Norman, Jonas Bjork, amongst others. And it was at this tournament two years ago that they hooked up for the first time. They've come a long way, short space of time. I'm surprised he's only won three tournaments. He's been in nine finals, three titles. But a few too many runner-up spots. Laser-like backhand. He's seeing the ball well. Take a look at this. Well, you raise a very good point about tournament wins. It's amazing to think that Mathieu was winless for five years before he won his two tournaments this season. Showing to the scene sensationally in 2002, winning back to back tournaments from the qualifying event in Moscow and Lyon. Many people thought this guy is heading for the top five and he's going to be there sooner rather than later, but it didn't pan out that way. He's slowly but surely making his way back up the rankings now. It was at the end of that very year when he had that five set loss to Yushni in the Davis Cup final. I think has scored him mentally. It just shows you what a responsibility the Davis Cup captain has. If you throw someone in there too early in their career cause an awful lot of damage which can prove irreparable. You've got to be very careful. Excellent points. Some big tennis being played in patches here. Especially considering very difficult conditions. It is that it's not necessarily blowing in one direction all the time. It's pretty gusty too. And it's come on the back of two or three really calm days, so that it's spent most of their time in Montreal practicing in very good conditions. This morning it was very humid. So they've got to really think on their feet, make the necessary adjustments, not get set up too early, and perhaps bring the targets in a little bit, and crucially the expectation level. Plastic, you cannot plastic. think about playing your best tennis when the conditions are as difficult as these. You're just looking to do the basics well, try and get back to the locker room, and still be involved in the event. Yes. 
Pass to be six foot five, those high bouncing balls you can hit down on them just like Mario did there with a double fisted backhand. This one gets up, still able to hit down on it. shot there did Mario such a dangerous approach shot going to your opponent's forehand it's not a lot of width or pace Stretch on the forehand side than it is when you're stretching out on your backhand. That applies just about everybody in the men's game. Able just to flick that wrist a little bit harder. Carol Toms, 4G, 13. It's a little cheap. Crucial on the big points to cut out the unforced errors, force the opposition to play well to win the point, especially in conditions like these where it's hard to do just that. gets involved in too many baseline exchanges. He doesn't make enough first serves. Keeping in mind that he hasn't played that many matches, I think it's going to be a big ask of him today to beat Paul Oriman too. Baseline. And just knows that you can see very cumbersome <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> just like that word, Jess. It's not the description you're looking for when you're a professional athlete. Decidedly cumbersome moving up the court. <laughs> but that's true. so well, so very quick and agile around the court, he can def turn defense into attack, but Mathieu is not that type of player, he likes to hit hard, hit fast and hit first, a little bit like you on a Saturday night there, Robbie. <laughs> 
During the time that he was ill, Mario spent a lot of time finishing up his law degree. He's just a, about one semester away from doing that. That's impressive. For a, such a well-respected high-ranked tennis player. I'm sure he just didn't spend his time finishing season one and two of Law and Order. <laughs> DVD. <laughs> That's yours and mine kind of law degree. In <laughs> It's good to see him move forward. I think he is such an opposing figure when he's at the net because he's such a big guy. He's got good feel around the net. He knows his way around the net well. That is emphasized by that quality drop quality. It's one of his great strengths, the ability to play aggressively, but also a nice feel too. Very complete player, but I agree with your description of him. He does get involved in too many baseline winners for my liking as well. He's tough to pass. Big winners are a great serve. Roughly feel it in there. Life is a little more difficult for his opponents. He can win a little bit more often. earlier than what Ancic expects. That's how he's able to create the angle. Let's 
Some of the trainers here to treat. Be a little bit of a blister. I know this is first tournament of the North American High Court Spring for the Frenchman. So the movement is very different to that that he experiences on the clay. Yeah, yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, with three minutes, medical timeout for Mr. Martin. Just be a little bit of a stop, something soon. Three minutes? Yep, three minutes. Suddenly you're jarring the body of Bob Moore when you're playing the hardcore. It is very, very tough on the body. You're used to sliding around a much softer body. really than having a blister on the foot or your racket hand. The two most annoying niggly injuries that you can have. One affects the movement, the other affects each and every shot. So frustrating. And Chich obviously needs to try and keep warm, no problems there, so there's some humor out there, but also just keep the focus, the concentration. Much better to be maybe wandering around, get the blood flowing. One minute remaining. One minute. Chair. Yep. I'm not a big fan of the injury timer, and especially if it's a loss of condition, getting a blister certainly is. And uh, any work, I feel, uh, that needs to be done by the trainer should be done within the normal time of a change of ends, if at all. Merci beaucoup. Two pairs of socks. Not all players do that, but most do. A little bit of extra cushioning. Get the shoes a little half size bigger. Most of the players, of course, this day and age have the strap. Surprisingly, Matthew, Matthew really doesn't. So after much ado about nothing. Four three opening set. No breaks as yet.
Silkins, lovely team. Side court. You know, a huge atmosphere to feed off. It can be hard, and especially when you haven't played that many matches in the last six months or so. Concentration needs practicing, just as any shot does. When you don't play matches, it can be hard to maintain it. Close to the ball was Ancic. Feet aren't right, execution isn't right. Adverse effect on Ancic. And that's why the rule, I think, is a little bogus. If you're not going to have a three minute time on at least keep it to three minutes, we both know no ways that they keep it to three minutes. It always ends up being a lot more than that. If you're going to have a rule in place, stick to it. serve very well throughout the course of the set. Indeed. Good. Let me have on Matthew. Good. 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 Good.